actually show the share. Your agenda doesn't have a canonical, uh, well, maybe it, it does, I don't know, but um, notes, air thing. No, it Probably. doesn't. The, the, um, the, uh, give me a second. Uh, the uh, PowerPoint has, um, oh God, Find it. Yes. Uh, all these things I was going to fix before I joined. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see here. Chat. Chat. I'll paste a link in the um, in the chat. There you go. Uh, let's see if this uh, share keynote. So, um, well, yeah, sorry a bit for this kind of technical mess at the start here. We'll hopefully get going a bit better later on. Um, things have been a bit chaotic here. Uh, anyway, welcome to this. Um, uh, interim for the ASDF group, our fifth one, if I counted correctly, uh, even though I, I never really figured out how this new numbering scheme of the IATF interim note should be. Um, but this is at least our fifth interim. Um, so so the not interims get numbered by the data tracker according to the order that we make them in, and uh, they aren't necessarily they don't necessarily occur in order of the numbers that you, uh, um, they aren't necessarily, uh, what's the right word, uh, uh, according to date. So, no. but, um, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this works anyway. Uh, the usual night, well, you are recorded. Be nice to each other. Remember ITF guidelines uh, for IPR. You can find them there. Here is the full note well that you've seen before. Here is the code of conduct. Um, be nice to each other again. Speak slowly and limit use of slang. Dispute ideas by using recent argument. Quite interesting. Use best engineering judgment. Interesting. Find the best solution for the whole internet and contribute to the ongoing work of the group and the ITF. And I know you guys will. So this is just for for uh, you know for our process to be complete. Here is the um, uh, uh, oh, what's the matter? Did you see the notification flash by there? What, what, no, it did okay. not. Okay, then I'm just sharing. Okay, I'm just sharing keynote. Okay, uh, it wasn't something bad. It was just I realized what it, I didn't. I missed what it was. OCF anyway. staff is that is that Michael Foster? I guess so. I yes, still haven't okay. figured out how to not be OCF staff without, <laughs> I don't know, drastic measures. Um, so here's the agenda for today. Um, we did the note well, the logistics, the code EMD is there. The WebEx, I forgot to paste that one. Uh, and roll call, you've done that already. Um, We'll do a quick status update on the working group. And I guess you know it mostly already. Uh, we do need to discuss the IATF 113 meeting plans. And uh, because the deadline for requesting a meeting is on Friday. And then the major topic for today is, of course, the getting the SDF RFC, uh, well, getting the SDF draft ready for, for working group last call, which is basically issue list processing. And here, uh, Karsten has done a couple of slides. Um, yeah, the same thing again. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, we are, you, you see this already, so we don't, we don't need to go into details. Um, basically, maybe we should take it before we, um, we talk about the major topic here, and uh, that is whether we should meet at at uh, in in Vienna or not. Um, so uh, we have a uh, an hour for this meeting, or is it ninety minutes? I have written down an hour. 
today is an hour yeah um so i would suggest that at the 40 minute mark that we cut co we we cover that topic which will tell us inform us more about where we are uh but won't have left it to the very end okay sounds good let's try to remember that and then we take the entry and planning it then as well anyway as you know there's some really ugly graphics but as you know we have um uh, one main document, the SDF uh, draft that will become the RFC. And um, that covers the core functionality and which is hopefully, you know, the scope wise of that RFC uh, being defined as what is needed to basically do the 1D data model basic models. And uh, so this is where what we're trying to wrap up right now. We finish a draft, submit working group last call, identify Shepard, do the other kind of process stuff. In addition to that, we have a couple of other potential work that we are, various people in this group, things are interesting to work on. Protocol mappings, relationships, uh, instances, and potentially others. And um, we do need to discuss this, of course, as well. But for today, I think we should focus on number one here, the SDF RFC. Um, and there's definitely things in the SDF RFC that we can sort of, if we don't do in there, we can push them off to any of these three or to other documents. So the purpose here is really about deciding sort of go, no go, whether we should push this to working group last call. And if there are sort of interesting things that we need to decide before that happens. So with that, um, uh, yeah. With that, I think we can uh, just jump on to um, uh, to Karsten, and I, I leave that to Karsten uh, to carry on. Karsten, go ahead. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we had a um, pretty extensive discussion at uh, one twelve. What we wanted to do, uh, and um, mu much of this has been done. Uh, some of this has not yet been completed. And uh, yesterday I submitted a dash 10 that uh, contains um, all those minor changes that, that happened since 112. And uh, our job now is to finish the <coughs> remaining issues and pull requests, <coughs> finish or, or maybe postpone them. That's also possible. Also, I think uh, we, we still need to do a, a readiness check for what, what's in the draft. Uh, we have to run the actual working group last call, and uh, finally, we need a document shepherd um, if the working group last call is successful. Next slide. Oh, by the way, can you click on format in the top right corner? Uh, then we get a little bit more screen space. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. It was fine. It was hidden. Thank you. Yep. So, uh, what are the, the pull requests? There are three pull requests uh, right now. Uh, one is uh, pull request number 45. Um, and uh, the idea was to, to maybe go back on the, the change we did in SDF 1.1, moving to a single input and single output uh, data structure for actions and events. <clears throat> and uh, we had uh, some some uh, uh, discussion on this. This is not a clear cut thing where where you immediately know which is the right one to do. Uh, this is uh, not quite a bike shed, but but it's uh, something where where it's easy to have uh, different perspectives. Uh, but it seemed to me that the discussion that we actually had. Uh, pointed out uh, two disadvantages of actually doing that revert. And uh, one is that it uh, really makes properties and events different, uh, more different, where they actually should be more, more similar. And uh, the other uh, observation is that it requires putting in a new mechanism that is looking a lot like type object uh, and we already have type objects, so it, it's uh, essentially putting in a redundant mechanism unless we actually find that it works very different. And then, of course, it's good to have a different mechanism for something different. But right now it looks like it really does the same things that the type object 
uh, does. So my take from the discussion we have had, which unfortunately is not perfectly documented at this point in time, um, is that this is a, a won't fix. So we, we are not going to make this uh, change. And this is the point where Ari comes in and explains uh, his view. <laughs> Great, thank you, Karsten. Yeah, I, I think that the, the main potential benefit uh, from, from this change would be that we would get these um, SDF names for all the input and output parameters. Um, in a in, in the same way that we have a SDF name for each property and each action, then you they would all they, those names would all reach reach out all the way uh, up to individual uh, parameters. Then of course the two good questions are: Do we need that feature? And if we do, is there a way to get that feature with the uh, type object construct? Um, and I guess we could come up with a, a, a pointer construct that can reach out all the way inside the type object. And maybe we even have it right now. It's just not, not obvious. Mm, but anyway, I, I mean, I don't, uh, I'm also leaning towards closing this uh, PR uh, based, based on the discussions that we had, uh, because we don't have that, that strong a case for having it. Um, but maybe what we could look at Potentially, once the RFC is done for the future versions, like how do we uh, construct those pointers that reach out all the way uh, to the parameters? That if you need to, for example, in your uh, program or API, talk about those, you would have as SDF terminology to address that. Yeah, so if, if you are using this type object construct, then of course you have a, a quality called properties. Uh, which is extremely confusing because it comes from JSON schema org. And um, that is actually doing this job. So behind that um, quality, you have names for the uh, various parameters. The, the only problem is that you cannot really see whether you have multiple parameters or you have a single parameter that uh, happens to be an object um, so it uh, <clears throat> decomposes into properties as well. So this is, um, of course, it's questionable whether that's actually a difference or not. Um, that depends a bit on, on the environment in which you want to use this. Um, but we, we, of course, also could uh, come up with a convention simply not to use a, a type object as a single parameter for um, a action input or event or action output. Michael. Yeah, I was, I was going to say what you said. <laughs> and then that you do have a JSON pointer. It, it does go through properties of an object, but we kind of know in SDF already that when we make an object with properties, we're really just describing a data structure with multiple data. And, but mainly the thing I wanted to say was, yeah, I think it's possible that we could have, have it both ways. And when there's a, sim a single parameter, um, have it be a, a simpler. It, it does, I don't think it matters that much. And I don't really have a strong use case one way or the other, but um, I'd just like to echo that, yeah, we can probably, we probably wanted, um, I'm agreeing with the, the proposed action that won't fix right now. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. I'm seeing a hand. Ari. Yeah. yeah, maybe what I would suggest here, let, let's go with the uh, won't fix forward and, but then also uh, write that down, like how would those pointers look like? Then we have then that case covered. Um, and I guess that tells us if it looks horribly <laughs> wrong doing that, then that indicates something, but I think it should be able to address the case of being able to point to those parameters. Um, let's write a few examples and, and close the PR. I think that's the right way to go. Okay.
So, next slide. So, um, we have PR36, which really is two different um, things. One is a clarification, set of clarifications for how SDFREF works. In particular, the, the PR introduces uh, resolved form, so we can talk about uh, the form of the uh, SDF that does not have the SDF refs in it, but has them resolved. And <clears throat> in order to make this uh, reversible and also as, a, as an additional piece of semantic information, um, this proposes the addition of an SDF ref from, which would be used in the resolve form to point back to from where this was resolved. Um, so uh, we had a lot of discussion about more complicated ways of leaving the, these breadcrumbs that uh, SDF ref is, is trying to um, express. And uh, my feeling is that we haven't quite arrived at, at a really good way to do this um, because an SDF ref from tells you which uh, class this was derived from, but it doesn't quite tell you what, what was added and what was not. Um, so in an SDF ref, you can have uh, qualities that happen to have the same value that the um, source, the SDF ref source has, and th those would, would not be documented. So yeah, <clears throat> this didn't quite uh, um, make the readiness uh, check uh, from from my point of view. Um, so um, I think uh, we should uh, do the clarifications, but uh, not do uh, the SDF ref from, but uh, put this in as an extension in the next version of SDF. Michael, I, I think we I think we're mostly ag agree with that, and we don't really all have the same notion of what this resolve of this uh, non macro expanding type form does. The main reason we were pushing resolution of it was because I felt like SDF ref was probably a better name for the looser the less. Um, um, macro like form, and we should come up with a better name for the 1 that does the expanding. But since nobody's done that, I think I'm agreeing what we need to go forward with SDF ref the way it is. Uh, clarifications that it, it is sort of bringing the properties over and there are certain ways of overriding it. In other words, I think that. The idea of using another definition as a template and then being able to override things only requires 1 keyword with some good rules <laughs> and this the next thing we add should be a thing that um, could be part of refer, um, relationships probably even um, because it functions to me it functions more in the domain of where you're using relationships that everyone else might not have the same notion of it but um, i think if it's a looser form you're really just pointing to something to make a statement about it and not really saying use these properties. And I think we don't have full agreement on that, but I think that um, I'm agreeing that we it's not ready. And, and the only reason where it's still on the list is because I thought there might be a, a name shuffle involved, but it sounds like that's not going to happen. So I'm going to stop um, um, proposing that. Go forward with SDFREF with clarifications. The other Michael. So, if we aren't doing it now, because it's not ready. Um, it sounds to me like you're saying that there's still, we still want to do it and I'm trying to understand if we want to do it in this, this document, or when you say as an extension, does that mean another document? Another document. Okay. Thank you. Or, or an update to this document. We haven't really discussed how we. Are going to do SDF 2.0, but uh... well, but not in SDF 
point X that we're, we want to working group last call soon. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm trying to get a, a get clear. Right. All right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. If if this would be delaying um, SDFRFC, then we should do 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 it later. Um, what I wonder when we do the clarifications for SDF ref, um, do we want to clarify something about the semantics, or is this pure macro extension, or does the use of SDF ref imply something about the relationship? Or do we want to also put those implications only in the future document? Or should it be here? So I guess those two two questions. Does it imply something and when to document it? Yeah, when, once we make it imply something, of course, we, we limit the uh, applicability uh, of, of the feature. Right now, it, it can do a lot of things because it's essentially just uh, structural or syntactical. Um, once we say it also means something, um, I think it would be better to, to have a way to uh, indicate uh, what it means in, instead of uh, just giving a single meaning to, to SDF ref. I mean, it, it's kind of an is a uh, in the first uh, approximation, but then it isn't because we are not insisting on, on list of substitution here. Yeah, I think you have a you have a good point there, and also what kind of Michael was referring to. Maybe we want to have a more powerful structure like the SDF relations yeah. and to describe what 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 is the result. So, yeah. I think that would favor yeah keeping keeping it later and and having the not having the semantics in this part. Maybe the one thing to think about would the later version we add would that be a whole new quality, or are we trying to potentially add semantics to SDFref. And if you want to do adding semantics to SDFref, then that's something of uh, it might be a bit more thinking needed. If it's a new quality, then it would be simpler. Yeah, in the chat, uh, Michael just proposed might be a instead of is a. Um, yeah, I, I think we, we, we need to understand what uh, kinds and levels of relationships uh, we have. Um, and um, th this is a kind of relationship at the model level where, where different structures declare that they are somehow related, uh, which is different from relationships at the instance level where something would declare that it actually the light switch of, of that light bulb over there. Um, and th that's the, the set of clarifications we need to get this relationship thing going. But I think that that's really a, uh, SDF 2.0 thing. Mm. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So, so Michael, are you, we haven't, did, did you, uh, Michael Richardson, did you uh, take down the conclusion for this or? Uh, so the conclusion I wrote down is that it might be in a new document. Um, and then I captured something about is a might be a I don't really understand might be a but that doesn't matter. Um, uh, we have further is a refinement of okay. Um, uh, my conclusion is that it's not done, uh, and that it won't get done in this document, uh, and it, it would be in a new document of some form to be determined. Okay. You're okay with that? Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. But I guess we should talk a bit about the details of the which uh, clarifications. Because some of the clarifications imply um, semantics in the PR. So, of course, those yeah. we shouldn't uh, bring in. Then there was the other clarification of like, what do you copy? Because now it's just you copy all qualities. Does that mean also definitions? Um, yes. But, may, but maybe we can have that over the email. Yeah. But, but make, does that. But does that have to be clarified in this base document? That would be base document, but yeah. Yes. The, the SDF ref process needs to be clarified. Um, I'm not sure a clarification is needed because the text that is there is very specific. 
Um, but uh, yeah, if, if this still leaves questions open, we should uh, make sure they are answered. Because th that is functionality that is part of um, STF1. Okay, right, perfect. It's recorded as an action. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping to simply cherry pick uh, uh, the text uh, from Ari, and then we have a, a new pull request, uh, pull request we could discuss. Sounds good. Perfect. Next slide. Yep. Yeah, this is one of, uh, I think, multiple readiness uh, questions we have to ask ourselves. So we, we do have uh, something called SDF product, um, which actually is exactly like an SDF thing, except that it also has one additional, and now I cannot use any word because we have already taken all of them, one additional quality, but not a quality in, in our quality sense, in that it's a completed product. And actually, I think that that uh, qualities like this should indeed be expressed by qualities and not by simply renaming STF thing into STF product, um, because we might have more than one bit we want to set uh, for an STF uh, thing beyond what, what STF product uh, does. So is the uh, point, Karsten, that um, we, have a, we might have a series of abstract um, models and that when you set this quality you're saying that actually these are no longer abstract these are actually this rep represents a real a real thing do, or do i misunderstand this this would be the meaning of that quality yes yeah okay and probably just having one bit is not uh, in, enough and people have always said they want to have an sku quality and so on um so um, I think we, we can actually uh, represent this uh, semantics by a quality that also supplies the, the missing information, how this became a specific uh, uh, thing and not just an abstract model. So um, if I build a, device, a thing uh, out of a number of other things, um, do, is that why I need to have more than one bit? Because there's assemblies that make it more and more real? Well, SDF thing already can give you assemblies. The, the reason to separate out SDF product from the otherwise identical SDF thing was that essentially the bug stops there and, and um, you're no longer talking about an abstract uh, concept of, of a device, but you are talking about a specific uh, uh, class of devices uh, that that were uh, chosen uh, to be built by someone. And so yeah, when I uh, when I assemble the bogies of a of a freight car out of brake products and wheel products, uh, I'm taking responsibility for the assembly at the end of the day. Um, if you got to sue me because my, the wheels failed, you sue me, not the maker of the wheels. Is that the kind of thing that you're trying to express? Certainly not the legal aspect. Well, not the legal aspect, but, but the investigator, the investigator who's investigating the thing says, oh, okay. So I need to look at the, it's entire thing, but I don't need to look up to the train maybe or something or. I think it was actually put into SDF um, as a sort of a placeholder during the discussion because there was there were a few questions like that. We all agreed that SDF thing could could do all of that, and we added the SKU to product as just an additional quality. I, I think it was more illustrative because we didn't really have a clear use case. SDF thing is really what it is, and, and I think like like you were saying, yeah, it, it's sort of the idea of if I make something that I want to uh, identify as a, you know, and it was like, uh, even I think in response to Ari asking for how do I compose a bunch of IPSO smart object models into a 
you know, what I would uh, put as a, uh, I don't know what, I, I don't know if it's always a product, but SKU makes it. So um, that's really was response to that. And I think that probably it got written into the language when it was just easy to add something into the schema and never got removed. So I'm, I'm totally agreeing with removing it because I think if we just made a model that had things like SKU in it, you know, an SDF model, an object, define an SDF object that has the information that you need to say that this thing is, has an SKU and is a product, and we can just even do it at that level. I don't think it needs a language feature. If later we decide it does, then we can add it as one of these additional layered specs, like how to define products with SDF, you know, if, if that really becomes a thing. So wasn't, wouldn't it fit better when we start looking at relationships and, and instances as in various way of doing composition later on? Uh, I think it's at a pretty natural place there. So I think I, I agree with this, remove and put it back later as part of a greater way of sort of bundling things together, which is not just things, which is something else potentially. Yeah, I agree. I think that would be a great time to have a look at this. I guess this is one of those early on remnants that hey, this kind of feels we need it, but we don't really have the concrete case for it. But having a look at when we look at these different instances, kinds, <laughs> classes, then having a look at the products to, um, to look at the bigger picture together makes sense. So I'd be up for removing it, uh, but keeping it in the backlog. Yep. Great. Great. Moving on. 52. Yeah, th this is an example of, of the readiness uh, problem that, that we might be having. So th there are data qualities, uh, readable, writable, and observable, uh, which are usually abbreviated as RWO. And these really describe interactions, not, not the data themselves, but uh, how you interact with the data obviously, uh, but we interact uh, on the property action event, on the affordance, not, not on the individual data. So it, it's weird to have data qualities that might be deeply nested somewhere in the data that, that tell you, suddenly tell you, oh, something is, isn't actually uh, writable at all. Um, so um, one, one suggestion was to move this up to the affordance level. Uh, but uh, th that's again not not so easy. So, for instance, for an event, um, events aren't really readable or writable; they are only observable. Um, so, <sighs> we could do this. Um, I I don't have a resolution for for this. So the the uh, Jan uh, Roman brought up the, the issue and I wrote one comment and then the discussion was stuck because uh, that there's no obvious way to, to handle um, this. But on the other hand, it's probably quite useful to be able to talk about readable, writable and observable. By the way, this is entirely different from nullable, which means uh, something about the data itself. So the nullable is not in the same bucket as readable, writable, and observable here. Ari? Yeah, so so my, my knee-jerk reaction here would be that, yeah, having them only for properties would be the right way to go. But you mentioned about observable event. Yes. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Well, um, Read, write, and observe are really specific kinds of interactions. And events probably have more than one kind of interaction. We only have talked about observe in, in the context of co-op. Uh, and uh, in the context of, of PubSub, there, there are other ways of, of uh, handling uh, events. And we haven't invented a data quality for that uh, yet. 
but I would expect that at some point we we distinguish between events that are just observable and events that that actually um, yeah have have uh, some property like last wishes and and are precious and and things like uh, yeah, things that events uh, do. I was um, going to say the same thing, mostly that uh, read, write, and observe are categories of things that go with the property interaction. And so the property interaction will have a protocol binding that has read, write, and observe. And very often in a real system, the data elements that are readable aren't the same ones that are writable and, and they're not even exchanged. Right, so if I do a write, I only include elements in with, with a complex schema of things that are exchanged. So it almost really even needs to go below or whatever you think of that, outside of the scope of our interaction affordance concept into the protocol binding. But so I, I think in, in a sense that these are sort of, um, but, but a lot of people feel like they are also kind of go with a property definition because they're, they're building a data model that, um, you know, they think would want to have those attributes. So I wonder if we could consider these as hints somehow and like maybe not yeah. act on it right now, but yeah. I think that's a pretty good way to describe how these should be processed. Mm. Uh, would, it, would it make sense to move them only to properties for now and for next version think about how, what, what does it mean for events? So one thing we want to do um, that I think makes that an interesting question and maybe a, a, a trade-off that we need to look at is that we would like to use define a data, an SDF data as a sort of a general sort of exchange and then use reuse that for both properties and, um, you know, event and, and sometimes action uh, uh, data as well. So. It's almost like we, if it was a hint, we could say, well, it really only applies to the property interaction and still keep it in the data part. And that would resolve the, the language structural issue with it. But um, I'm not sure that's a final solution, but anything we do right now is gonna be kind of interim. Yeah, Yang has uh, um, config true and config false, which are essentially writable uh, versus uh, read only, uh, and uh, they they have completely separate constructs for uh, actions, which they call RPC or action, and events, which they call notifications. Um, so you you wouldn't really have this this config true config false information on on the data, but then on the other hand, you you can still put it there. It just uh, doesn't mean very much. And uh, that's probably the way I would handle this here by saying this is information about the data that is uh, used at the interaction level, but how exactly it's used is something that the protocol binding tells you. One thing I'm, I'm thinking here, it probably is easier to later add it, the specific affordance than trying to remove it or redefine it. So if we're not quite sure what would it mean for events and uh, not to mention actions, um, I guess well, one way would be possible to only have it for properties now, but then for the future versions have it potentially defined for actions and events. That would of course then mean that you couldn't use them in those uh, STF data definitions. But no strong I opinion. Take, I would have to do okay. So so I would just think it through quickly. It's it's doable, and you would just use SDF ref, and then you would add those properties in. in uh, so you would have the basic data that would tell you about the you know data ness of it, and then you would uh, use SDF ref in your property definition and add the readable, writable, observable. So I think it worked fine. We can we need an example of it and and. But okay, that that seems to be a 
a way forward now for them that kind of covers our current requirements uh, to move it on to use it only for properties and, and uh, at now for now the the issue actually contains the proposal to, to move it from data qualities to property qualities it's mistyped in the title as product qualities which is not what is meant here um so it, it, uh, that, that's certainly one way of doing this but it do doesn't allow you to actually have a structure that um, is uh, more for instance, that is type object and has different uh, object properties in it that uh, uh, are different from the for the parts of the object. Um, I think Michael wants to do a time check. Yeah, I both want to yeah. do a time track. Uh, uh, so we need to have our discussion about meeting, but um, uh, I'm not sure I understand what the resulting action of this. I, I think that only only thing I under heard was from Ari who said to it was easier to later add it and I guess he meant add it for uh, actions and events and he wants to keep it for properties now but I didn't hear anything anyone uh, on the other proposal or maybe I missed it no it's the original proposal proposal in the issue and uh, is to do that yeah and uh, unless uh, we we have uh, um, bright new idea i think that's what we should do so quick quick point uh karsten you mentioned about a potential downside i didn't quite catch but would it be possible to write that down in the pr or in the issue so we have it documented yeah yeah okay. please take Thank down you. action for me okay, okay. next slide. so uh well before you go to next slide let's talk about itf 113. I'd, I'd really like to quickly look at uh, slide 16 and 17. Okay. Was it 16 and 17? Not 15, but the next one after that. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 the implicit strategy I had in mind here was that the, the STF1 RFC will be, uh, will have minimal further additions. Uh, we will only finish what we have. We do check, need to check need and readiness uh, for every feature. And if in doubt, leave it out or leave it for further extension. And we also need to make sure that we actually have the extension points uh, that we need for that. And then next slide, uh, SDF2 uh, would uh, take up additional issues and actually the strategy, what we want to do for SDF2 should be documented in SDF1. So people who implement SDF1 know what, what's going to hit you in, in a year from now or something. And uh, the, the approach of course should be to do as much as possible of SDF2 in terms of exercising extension points. And the, the major one extension point we have is adding new quality. So that, that's probably going to be most of SDF2. Uh, but we might also need to have some deeper extensions. So the, this old issue we discussed about uh, going into different namespaces and so on, that's probably not something we can do just with the uh, quality. So that's uh, my plan and uh, previous slide. Um, so the, what, what's on the previous slide really is what, what should be uh, finished or near finished at the time of IETF 113. Great. What, what we missed one here, that was the redness check, yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, I guess we have covered a couple of those um, issues and PRs today. And I still have some of them, like the last one, is is a bit of, of uh, I guess some some additional sort of work on that is needed, uh, a reasonable level. Uh, is there with that? Because when we discussed, we had a sort of a one DM discussion last week about do we cover the basic use cases with the current draft. Uh, so just to make sure there are no other sort of like we cannot continue on the one data model 
adopted models and this is resolved and yes so we don't, i mean we shouldn't need to wait for sdf2 to work on the adopted data models for instance to my knowledge there is no such problem but but uh, just to be be clear on that yeah that depends a bit on how ambitious 1dm gets in in using composition and derivation for building its models because what we can do there right now is is uh pretty uh well defined and pretty limited yeah but still i think maybe we can that is enough for where we are today and i think the composition bit will be exactly the next step to address with these relationships and, and so yep. on. however we put so, in instances and i think what to we paraphrase you nicholas i think what you're saying is that sdf1 will be uh useful for 1dm but that that there will still be some some places that are difficult which is part of what's motivating sdf2 yeah exactly yeah, yeah that, that's intentionally good... started with the limited scope of just providing some interoperable objects that could be composed using some other mechanism into more complex things so i i would agree that sdf1 in this definition is going to fulfill what we originally uh, set out to with 1DM. And we can Great. discuss yeah, this further in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and, yeah. Sure, because uh, that's when the 1DM call is. All right, um, yeah. I have another call taking me away uh, five minutes after in that point anyway. Um, so, so as to the question about ITF 113, I'm hearing that we don't really need to have a meeting. Uh, we have a deadline um, uh, to get the document, uh, the changes made, perhaps for the, the draft deadline. And then we could start a working group last call. It sounds to me like we could do that. Um, I think that we have a challenge in terms of getting a review um, because it is a pretty... Um, I don't want to say esoteric, but it is a it's hard to have an opinion about what's going on if you aren't writing code in some sense um, or translating or interacting with other things. Um, I don't know if this is an appropriate thing to suggest, but uh, would it be worth having a 10 minute presentation in IoT Ops about the state of SDF1? Presentations don't replace discussions. No, I agree. The goal is to 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 interest other people in what's going on and potentially get some additional review. Maybe it's a dumb idea at this point. I must I'm just trying to understand what we're where we're at here. Well, I I was uh, seriously hoping that we would be in AD review phase uh, at IoT of 113 and would be able to react to the AD review input. At the during meeting. the meeting, during yeah. the meeting, you mean? Yeah, I don't think we're going to be there. So we need to get that uh, uh, working group last call, uh, I think. Um, we can ask our AD for a review at this point, if you like. Um, concurrently with working group last call. I'm not sure this is good. I think we should really finish our working group last call, but we shouldn't wait another two months uh, with to do that. the working group last call. Okay, so so uh, to me, I mean, I just have like four actions written down relating to the document. Um, and so I guess the question is, do you need to the end of January to fix that or do you think you need longer? I think we should have a working with a scalable version by the end of January. Okay. Is there more to do today? We haven't decided if we're having 113 or not, and it sounds to me like not is better. I mean, uh, from a practical perspective, I will not, or or Ericsson folks will likely not be traveling. So, yeah. uh, and I don't know about you, Michael, or or, or others from 
stateside in Canada and so on. Sixty percent, I will go. No decision till the end of January. So part of what I'm, what I, what part of the travel consideration is that if we're not traveling or we're not meeting in person, uh, then there's not a lot of. Po we might as well just have another virtual interim at our own pace. Right. Mm -hmm. Should we do that then? And then I think we should try to keep the work alive so we can meet in, in person in, in in July. Yeah. Well, that will be a meeting about SDF two then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Great. That's great. That yeah. that's that's great. And 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 maybe my thoughts about marketing for it is uh, it would apply to then. Um, I think that definitely it needs a presentation. I know that there's been not correct me if I'm wrong that that the there's a number of groups, OPC, for instance, that have have not warmed to this work, um, and perhaps they just need to see it uh, in a in a in a more final state first. Hmm. So, do we then have a decision not to have a meeting at uh, in in Vienna? Uh, have an interim sometime thereafter. Uh, depending on how these working group last calls and other reviews and shepherd stuff and so on goes on uh, based on that and then sort of on a rough rough plan try to have meet up in summer uh, mm -hmm. to work on the other sort of stuff on our plate uh, and with that comes all the re potential rechartering and, and so on if we need that can we call that, that sounds, the plan that sounds to me like like fine, so no meeting at IETF one one three. Further virtual interim meetings. Uh, it's, to me, it sounds like we want at least, um, at least two, before uh, IETF one one four. Maybe, maybe I think one. We want one in February. I was going to say one at the end of February, um, and one at the beginning of April. It sounds to me like like that sounds like the the uh right right thing to me yeah does this you, time slot usually work for people because doing the doodles is a bit of a pain well it works for everybody who's in the car right now <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's a bad bias in the, in the, in the statistical data uh, uh, yeah so there's that but we haven't really missed very many people but maybe someone else could reach out at, at this next call and ask for, for sure yeah. um i'm just going to say that the downside about Monday morning is that, I mean, it's morning for me, afternoon for you, but the downside is that we don't feel, it doesn't feel as prepared. Um, so I think if we're going to do this time slot that we need to get a little more prepared a little bit sooner. So yeah, maybe a few more days before the diff. Um, also, Karsten, I wanted to say that this diff, that you can't do side-by-side -side diff effectively because there's quite a few very long lines, over long lines in it. Yes. Um, so it would, to my mind, be worth wrapping those lines and doing a, yes. a revision that just fixes that. Yeah. So that can you put it in the shoe? Yeah. Should I put it in the shoe? Um, well, I can write action here. Post. Great. Hey, I, I have to go. Uh, I have a meeting coming up. So do you guys. So um, I guess we'll say goodbye for now. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karsten, for all the work. And everybody, see you in the next meeting. <laughs> Bye, Michael. Thank you. Bye-bye.